Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, um, and welcome to the October 18th business meeting of Clackamas County Commissioners. Would you please rise and follow me in the pledge? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one my nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Because of the uh, Shake and bake, as I like to call it today. Um, we should do the roll call. We should do the roll call. Yes. yes. Thank so you. You're right. I will start with that. <laughs> so, and I do do want to introduce Mr. Nate Boderman, who is here on behalf of the Office of County Council, and Mary Rathke, who is serving as your clerk of the board this morning. Uh, I'll start with Commissioner Fisher. Here. Commissioner Reynolds. Here. Commissioner Savas. Here. Chair Humberston. Here. Thank you. Uh, Chair Bernard's out of the office this week, and he will not be in attendance today, obviously. Um, so moving on, there's just some minor changes in our agenda today. We're going to start with the Housing Authority Consent Agenda. Uh, so uh, let me get where I need to get here. Um, we will um, recess the regular meeting of the county commissioners and open the meeting for the Housing Authority. And the first item on our agenda is the Consent Agenda. Okay, today's consent agenda, approval of an intergovernmental agreement between the Housing Authority of Clackamas County and Metro for regional housing measure implementation planning and a request for approval to apply for Brownfields Assistance Grant through Metro for environmental assessment at Clackamas Heights. Do the commissioners wish to remove any items from the agenda? Hearing none, uh, the chair would entertain a motion. I move we approve the Housing Authority Consent Agenda. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve the Housing Authority Consent Agenda. Is there any further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Uh, we will now reconvene as the County Board of Commissioners. And the next item on our agenda today will be the uh, a public hearing. Uh, let's see here. Um, <clears throat> the public hearing is an approval of, a multi of multiple board orders accepting a transfer of jurisdiction from Clackamas County to the city of Happy Valley for the following roads, all of Southeast Vogel Road, a portion of Southeast Armstrong Circle, all of Southeast Rock Creek Court, all of Southeast Stony Brook Court, all of Southeast Hemrich Road, and for a portion of Southeast Sunnyside Road. And speaking on behalf of the issue is Rick Maxwell, Department of Transportation and Development. Mr. Maxwell. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Rick Maxwell. I'm with the Department of Transportation and Development. Uh, today we have before you a request to transfer jurisdiction, as you said, of Vogel Road, a portion of Southeast Armstrong Circle, Southeast Rock Creek Court, Southeast Stony Brook Court, <coughs> Southeast Hemrick Road, and a portion of Sunnyside Road to the city of Happy Valley. This request has been thoroughly discussed by staff of, of both jurisdictions. Uh, this area of Happy Valley has seen <clears throat> extensive annexation and development. Transferring jurisdiction of Vogel Road, a portion of Armstrong Circle, Hemrick Road, and a portion of Sunnyside Road uh, will result in streamlined permitting and construction standards uh, consistent with the Happy Valley street system. Southeast Rock Creek Court and Southeast Stony Brook Court are older developed streets uh, in need of repair and upgrade. The $106,000 cost you see um, for this transfer is equivalent to the cost of asphalt for a two inch overlay of these streets. The uh, total roadway miles proposed for this transfer is 2.46 uh, miles containing approximately 758,000 square feet of right of way. Uh, this request is consistent with the county's practice and policy of partner, partnering with local jurisdictions to provide government services at the least cost for our citizens. Uh, notice for today's action was published for four weeks in the um, Clackamas Review newspaper. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Nate Boderman to share information about some minor um, additional work needed to finalize this transfer. Thanks, Rick. Uh, so late yesterday, we were talking with Happy Valley, and uh, an issue came up over annexation. 
And the issue is that we are only authorized under state law to transfer jurisdiction of roads within city limits. And there are small portions of two of the six roads uh, subject to the board orders today that actually fall outside of city limits. And so under state law, obviously, we're not able to transfer jurisdiction um, without the annexation. So the plan is to bring forward the annexation proposals to the board for its consent uh, because we didn't get notification of this until yesterday. Obviously, we didn't have time to put any of this together. And so what the plan would be today is to, um, if you're inclined to do so, pass or adopt the board orders and then at a later business meeting come back with the annexation petitions uh, to, to consent to the annexation of those small portions of roads into Happy Valley. Once those annexations are complete, then Happy Valley would then follow up with the, the, the remainder of the process necessarily to, to, to finalize everything. So again, sort of a, a late, uh, late issue in the game, but uh, again, we think that as the board orders are drafted, we're still able to complete the action, uh, provided you consent to the annexations at a later business meeting. So again, happy to answer any questions on that, but uh, wanted to alert you to that. And so here in a couple of weeks, when you see those consents come through, uh, you're not wondering why you approved a transfer before kind of cart, cart ahead of the horse, I guess you can say. So anyway, that's our purpose for bringing that issue up today. Okay, commissioners have any clarifying questions from the presenters? And I see that uh, Com Commissioner Savas has a question. Yeah, so just quickly then, so we would um, make the motion as suggested or we would make a small amendment to the motion? Based on this discussion, I think it's clear in the record what our intent is. And so if you make the motion as drafted to approve all of the board orders, uh, the two board orders by operation of law can't be effective until that's annexed in. And so if you make the motion as drafted, okay. it should take care of itself. Right. Okay, any other f questions? Uh, seeing none, I will uh, open the public hearing, see if anyone wishes to speak. And I see I have here a Mr. Lance Allard, I believe it is. Yes. Please come forward, sir, and have a seat, and please identify yourself and give us your address. Yes, I'm Lance Allard, uh, 12955 Southeast Rochella Court, uh, Happy Valley. And I'm concerned on the Vogel Road with the construction that is going on there with the school and uh, t and a future shop shopping center onto that street. It's a uh, lane and a half street, and it isn't wide enough for anything on there. Safety is my main concern with the school going in. Uh, it's not wide enough for two school buses. It's not wide enough for kids to walk along. There's no sidewalks, just the big ditches like normal out in the country there. Um, it needs to be widened all the way through, and uh, and at Foster Road is a dangerous intersection. Um, and also the speed limit, we get told that ODOT sets that, and then ODOT tells us Clackamas County sets that. Right now the speed limit set at 40, it was 30, it was raised when they redid Sunnyside. Uh, during construction they raised it to 40, it needs to go back down to 30 at least. Um, that needs to be, that's something that should be done and also the improvements. Um, there is, uh, I get told there's no money, but I understand that Clackamas County came into some money from Happy Valley to do road improvements. Some of that could be earmarked for that improvement possibly, I don't know. Uh, but that's all I really have to say right now on the subject. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, Mr. Johnson, would you like to come forward and uh, can you possibly uh, respond to some of the gentleman's concerns? I would love to. Thank you. I've never been here. Is this on? Is this on? Yeah. Okay, perfect. It's a different angle. Uh, good morning, board. My name is Dan Johnson. I'm the director of the Department of Transportation and Development. Um, you know, first and foremost, I want to acknowledge Mr. Allard's concerns. Um, there are concerns that we hear um, quite often on the um, edges of our urban areas, those edges that are moving from an ur a rural environment into an urban environment. Uh, the concerns that he brought up are valid, um, and they're valid to the extent that um, improvements will be done on that road. It will be widened. It will be widened, though, as development occurs and or the city of Happy Valley were to move forward on capital projects. Um, so improvements to that area are um, forthcoming. In fact, I know the board is aware, and I hold this up, you don't have this as a part of your packets, but I just bring it to speak to the comments today. Happy Valley is actively looking at adopting a comprehensive plan 
for that area west of their current city boundary. And with that comprehensive plan, adoption will be a transportation system plan. That system plan will identify um, needed capital improvements, which will then go into their capital improvement plan to be completed because the road will be transferred to the city of Happy Valley. In regards to the safety concerns uh, that were raised on Foster, I asked our transportation safety folks this morning, kind of give me some history on that. Um, looking back at a five-year window, there have been three crashes that we have had reported on Foster. Um, two were um, rear ends and one was a turning um, incident um, at the intersection. I think the technical word that our folks used was peewee. It's not a great intersection. Um, it's at a skewed angle. Um, there will need to be a realignment at some point in time. Um, but when our development group um, was asked for comments from the city of Happy Valley, there's a couple things that are apparent. One of which is um, the road is, the intersection is not over capacity. There isn't crash data to support um, additional improvements there that we could get vetted through a legal process as an exaction from the development, uh, nor were there warrants for a left turn lane. And so all of those thoughts go into the comments that we provide to cities on um, when a development is occurring in the city but affects county roads. So there's no real data that we have that can support the exaction of those improvements. Will it happen? Yes, it will. Uh, the question is it will happen when more development occurs in and around that area through that entitlement process. So to that, I offer that for your consideration. Uh, if there's any questions about that, I'd be glad to answer them at this time. Does any of the board members have questions? No, I do have a comment, though. Go ahead. So, Rick, I just I want to say thank you for your email that outlined your interactions with the neighbors. Oh, you're welcome. Community. I really value us listening to our citizens and I really appreciate you communicating that to the board because that I know I can I'll speak for my colleagues here to say that's a high priority for us all of us to make sure that our citizens are listened to and that we take their concerns seriously and that we provide them adequate information so thank you so much well I, I live in Happy Valley myself and so I mean I'm interested in making it a livable community just like everybody else so thank you Commissioner Savas. Yeah, just briefly is that I, I did go out and drive that area to see the project with the school districts on, and I'm assuming the school district will have to bring at least the frontage of the property up to standards and knowing that it's a school property, school children, it's kind of being incumbent upon both the school and the city to make the safety improvements and the routes to school safe and safety as a priority. But um, uh, I guess there's a, a lot of work to be done um, with the relationship between the city and and uh, the school district, as well as knowing how odd of an intersection that is there at Foster and Vogel. It's kind of an interesting pie shape. You have a very, very yes. thin pie shaped property there. And the school district's just, just uh, to the west of that, I believe, if I got my directions, didn't get turned around. <laughs> but um, I, I do acknowledge that, and it's, uh, it is an odd, uh, it's just an odd layout there. Okay, and are there any other, any other comments from uh, any of the other commissioners? You know, seeing none, I will close the public hearing and ask for a motion. Uh, I move we approve the board orders as presented today relating to the transfer of jurisdiction from Clackamas County to the City Happy Valley for all of Southeast Vogel Road, for a portion of Southeast Armstrong Circle, for all of Southeast Rock Court, Rock Creek Court, for all of Southeast Stony Brook Court, for all of Southeast Hemrick Road, and for a portion of Southeast Sunnyside Road. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve the board orders as presented today relating to the transfer of jurisdiction from Clackamas County to the city of Happy Valley for all of Southeast Vogel Road, for a portion of Southeast Armstrong Circle, for all of Southeast Rock Creek Court, for all of Southeast Stony Brook Court, for all of Southeast Hemorrhage Road, and for a portion of Southeast Sunnyside Road. And I'm sure you'll make sure that the record shows that um, there's a timing <coughs> issue involved here that will be addressed before it's complete. Thank you. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. The next item on our agenda today is the consent agenda. Would the clerk please read the consent agenda? You bet. Today's consent agenda. Under Health, Housing, and Human Services, approval of amendment number two to a revenue agreement with o CARE Oregon for the primary care payment model program per member per month incentive program. Approval of amendment number one to the revenue agreement with CARE Oregon for the integrated behavior health program per member per month incentive program. 
Approval of amendment number five to a revenue agreement with Providence Health Plan and Providence Health Assurance for the modification of Oregon Health Plan line of business for the Yamhill Community Care Organization Network Program. Approval of an intergovernmental agreement with Clackamas Fire District number one for Project Hope, opioid prevention and reduction. Authorization to purchase three category B transit buses for the Mount Hood Express Transit Service. Under the Department of Transportation and Development, approval of an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Happy Valley regarding the transfer of Southeast Vogel Road, a portion of Southeast Armstrong Circle, Southeast Rock Creek Court, Southeast Sto Stony Brook Court, Southeast Hemrick Road, and a portion of Southeast Sunnyside Road. And approval of an uh, intergovernmental agreement with the University of Oregon for AmeriCorps member to help support sustainability related work. Under finance, uh, approval of contracts for on-call interpreter services for Clackamas County Departments, approval of a contract with frontline facilities management and maintenance for window cleaning services. Under elected officials, approval of previous business meeting minutes. Under county administration, approval of Clackamas County Housing Needs Assessment Amendment Number 1 with Economic Consultants Oregon. DBA Echo Northwest to provide a housing needs assessment for Clackamas County. Business and Community Services approval of revenue, a renewal for a lease agreement <coughs> with the United States Coast Guard for a portion of property on Hog Island for Willamette River Light 14. Under North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District, approval of a grant amendment with Oregon a grant agreement, excuse me, with Oregon Parks and Recreation Department for development of the nature play area at the Boardman Wetland property. And that concludes today's consent agenda. Do the commissioners wish to remove or pull any items from the consent agenda today? Seeing none, I chair would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll move that we approve the consent agenda. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion is approved. The next item today is our citizens' communication, the inimitable Les Pool. Where do I start? Three minutes is not enough time to share with you what I would like to say. But in all of the recent turmoil, my life was put in perspective the night before last. I've been going to sleep like you folks do at 1 o'clock in the morning because your brains are going all day long. So at 1.24 in the morning, I heard the sirens. And once again in my neighborhood, Clackamas County Fire responded to, a, to just a mess. The fire started on the outside of the neighbor's house. It burned up their boat. It blew up their car tanks. Um, and it just helps you put everything in perspective when you get up in the morning and you see the crap on Facebook and the claims you're seeing made in an election and all of the focus on personalities rather than on issues. So. I don't want to be dramatic here, but it's been an interesting uh, week for all of us. I want to comment on a couple of quick things. We've got two minutes left. One of them is the tolling issue. Uh, we've received a final ballot language and question from the Attorney General. Um, I, I don't know if we're going to challenge it. This, it's, it's one of those things you can probably live with but I can assure you that the language that, that has been offered is adequate for us to go out and gather over 100,000 more signatures. It's going to be a lot of work. Daunting is a great word for it. But we'll get there, and we'll get it on the ballot. And if we get this on the ballot, I believe it'll pass. I don't believe it's a partisan issue. And I believe with some changes in priorities, the state and ODOT and local governments could get I-205 built without tolling. We're spending a few hundred million capping I-5. We're spending a lot of money on a lot of things other than protecting our distribution network. 
that bottle of water that I carried in here costs more than it did, and it's going to continue to cost more. So I don't want to pontificate about tolling. I want to promote the idea that we're going to get a chance to vote on it in 2020, and it will not prevent tolling for the purposes that are currently allowed by the federal government. If the county gets to the point where we need to build a bridge and replace the ferry and it's tolled, that wouldn't fall under our measure because you're using the money to fund and build something. You're increasing capacity. You're solving a problem. You're not just taking money from people for using the roads, charging more during peak hours, then coming up with some gobbledygook about social justice with an issue where there is no social justice. So if anyone is confused, I want to just close by saying tolling would still be legally allowed under our measure, and I've certainly got a lot of work to do. Thank you. Thank you, Les. And thanks for keeping it short today. We're, we're on a tight schedule, I'm sure you know. The next item that we have on our agenda is a presentation on earthquake preparedness and the Clackamas County shakeout drill. Jamie Poole from Disaster Management is presenting today. Thank you. Good morning. So today I'm here to present uh, about our shakeout drill. Um, all state and local agencies are required by state statute to conduct an annual earthquake drill, so we are aligning it with the great shakeout. <clears throat> Excuse me. Today at 1018, Clackamas County is participating by practicing their drop, cover, and hold on protective measure. And two of our county buildings will uh, continue with, after the earthquake drill to evacuate following that. So the public services building and the development services building will evacuate. Um, during a real earthquake, we would have all buildings evacuate after the shaking stops, and they wouldn't be allowed back into the building until those buildings are inspected. Um, today we are showing a video produced by Clackamas County Public and Government Affairs, along with disaster management. And uh, the video discusses our earthquake risk, as well as how to protect yourself during an earthquake. Disaster management. We all know and appreciate how beautiful our county is, but it's essential that we all remember that this area is prone to earthquakes. We live in earthquake country. I've worked in the field of disaster preparedness for over 20 years, and let me tell you, knowing what to do when the ground starts shaking is very important. It really can make the difference in reducing your risk of injury. Here's how you can prepare. Your limited experience with earthquakes may give you a false sense of safety. Perhaps you did nothing or ran outside and you survived with no injuries. You may even have crawled under a desk and later felt you overreacted. You likely have never experienced the intense shaking that's possible from a strong earthquake. Back and forth motion of several feet per second can cause the ground to jerk out from under you, potentially sending airborne every unsecured object around you. This is why you need to learn to immediately protect yourself after that first jolt and not wait to see if the earthquake will be strong. Rescue teams dispatched to seismic events around the world all agree that drop, cover, and hold on is the appropriate action to reduce injury and even death during an earthquake. When the shaking begins, drop onto your hands and knees. This position protects you from falling and allows you to move if necessary. Cover your head, neck, and your entire body if possible under a sturdy table or desk. Hold on to your shelter until the shaking stops and be prepared to move with your shelter if the shaking shifts it around. If there is no table or desk nearby, go to an interior wall or low-lying furniture and cover your head and neck with your arms and hands. If you are driving, coast to the side of the road Stop and set the parking brake. Avoid bridges and stay inside the vehicle until the shaking stops. If you use a wheelchair or have mobility impairments, set the wheel lock, bend forward, and protect your head and neck with your arms or a pillow. If you're in bed, stay put, hold on to the bed, and protect your head with a pillow. 
While images of collapsed structures and earthquakes can be frightening, most buildings in the United States do not collapse. Studies of injuries and deaths caused by earthquakes show that you're much more likely to be injured by falling or flying objects. Drop, cover, and hold on will help protect you from these injuries. You will be more likely to react quickly when shaking begins if you have actually practiced how to protect yourself. Millions of people will be practicing drop, cover, and hold on during the Great Shakeout. Join me and hundreds of thousands of Oregonians because practice makes perfect sense. When the shaking starts, you don't want to think about what to do. You want to know what to do. It could save your life. So I do have a question. So when we drop, so my first instinct would be to go under this desk, but there's nothing to hold on to. Would it be better to go to an interior wall under those circumstances? I'm I think it would be appropriate to go under a sturdy um, okay. table like this and then just crouch down and cover okay. your head. Um, so even though there's not like something to hold on to, this is still a this better. This is pretty sturdy, yeah. Okay. okay. So before we leave this, um, we have one of two choices. When this goes off in about two minutes, um, we'll, we'll be ducking and covering and then, and then leaving the building. Do you want to come back to... Uh, to discuss uh, the dog and the word and, and the other things that we do, or shall we just end the meeting because I know we have an 11 o'clock appointment that we have to be at I today. I think we should just end the meeting. Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure we had consensus on that. Yeah. So. Yeah. so we'll simply relax can, and... Uh, can we uh, announce that next week there's no business meeting? Yes. You guys are attending an event with Kurt Schrader, and, but we will have a birthday celebration because Clackamas County is 175. And that'll be Thursday here in this room at 11 o'clock. Okay. So, Chair, are you to adjourn just before 10, 18? Yeah, I think we'll uh, um, go ahead and adjourn now. and no, allow... they, they want to see us. They, they want us on camera. They okay. want to see okay. us okay. drop okay. cover. We don't have cameras under here, do they? No, but okay. there's one there. <laughs> so, if you like, I could uh, use a little bit of time with my report. Sure. Okay. okay. Up until the very moment. Mm -hmm. you then I'll get cut short. I can be your shaking. have less than a minute. <laughs> All right. So uh, what I wanted to share with you, I got uh, several items of good news. And uh, we had uh, received a very nice note from Katie McNeely, uh, broker, property manager. For good morning. Oh. This is the great shakeout. No more. One of the largest earthquake drills ever. We're adjourned. <laughs>